Hello everyone and welcome to Body Bags. I'll be your reviewer for today. I'm Lonnie from Terra and Tats and uh, yeah, we're doing the theme week this week. We're doing uh, Shutter exclusives or Shutter originals. <clears throat> Excuse me. Yeah, this is my brilliant idea and uh, the reason why I just thought it would be a really good idea because, uh, you know, I've been watching a number of, you know, Shutter exclusive movies on DVD and Blu-ray and I just... Um, more often than not, you know, I've been very, very pleasantly surprised with a lot of them, and, um, I just thought it'd be fun, you know, I thought, you know, and there's definitely, like, you know, there's all kinds of movies to explore and everything, you know, the, the movies, the shows and everything, you're getting, you know, stuff from all over the world, and, you know, independent stuff, and just, I just thought it'd be a fun, you know, a fun week, you know, we could talk about this, and, um, yeah, the movie that I want to talk about, this also gave me a good opportunity to do this one, and uh, I kind of wanted to jump on this one. The movie that I'm talking about is from 2022 and it's called Allegoria. And uh, the reason why I wanted to talk about it is because this is the writing and directing debut of Rob Zombie's kid brother, Spider One, who is the lead singer, frontman for the band Power Man 5000. And I just thought it'd be fun. You know, it's like, uh, you know, we talk about Rob Zombie's movies. On here, you know, I've reviewed a number of his movies. Some of the other guys have reviewed some of his stuff. And uh, I just thought, you know, hey, man, you know, like now that his brother made a horror film, I thought it'd be fun to talk about that. You know, let's let's bring him into the mix. I wonder if Rob Zombie, though, I like I wonder if him and his brother, like they ever argue back and forth where, you know, it's like where Rob is kind of like, you know, man, you, you know, tell us, you know, his brother, like, man, you're a booger. You know that? It's like, Dad, why is everything I do? You got to always copy me. You know, I go and get a band together, you know, called White Zombie and stuff like that. It's like, then you have to go get a band and call it Power Man 5000. It's like, yo, I started making horror movies. Now you got to start making horror movies. Why you always, man, why you always got to copy me? I wonder if they've ever had that argument. Probably not, but you never know. <clears throat> Excuse me. God knows I've done that with my brothers over the years quite a bit. You know, it's like... Oh, you do. I've done that with them. They've done it with me. It was like, why is it when you know I do something, you always got to copy me? Why you always got to follow me? And all that kind of stuff. But anyway, so yeah, this movie here. Um, this is actually, you know, I'm actually really impressed with this. The first time I watched it, it was kind of, a lot of it went over my head, but watching it a second time, I really warmed up to it. And I would strongly suggest if you're gonna check this movie out, I would suggest maybe. Yeah, go in for more than one viewing. I think, you know, you would, I think, you know, like, uh, you would benefit from this and you would warm up to it a lot more, you know, if you watch it more than once, because it does feel like some stuff gets lost in the mix. Um, it's definitely, one thing I will say about, you know, um, Spider-1 that is different from his brother is that, uh, it's kind of interesting the way he works because, you know, it's like with, uh, <clears throat> <clears throat> Sorry, my throat's always dry. One of the benefits of living in Arizona. But, um, yeah, I think it's kind of interesting, though, because, you know, in terms of style, I mean, we all know Rob Zombie's style. You know, like with House of a Thousand Corpses, it was very kind of carnival-esque, uh, music video, all that kind of stuff. And then after that, you know, the, a lot of the movies he did was kind of like horror mixed with kind of a Western theme, you know? Uh, Devil's Rejects, Three from Hell, things like that, and uh, with his, you know, and of course, you know, Rob always let it be known, like, his influences were movies like, you know, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, things like that, Spider Baby, things like that, um, and this one here, this movie feels more like, uh, uh, you know, so, yeah, kind of like um, Rob's it, movies feel more like a, a feel of, like, Toby Hooper, whereas, like, Spider One's movies feel, this movie, uh, feels more like a cross between like Quentin Tarantino and David Lynch, if that makes any sense. Um, the main theme is like, you know, is the main thing is about art and artists. And, you know, there are different, um, you have these different stories and the stories are all about artists in, in some form or another. We, uh, we open with uh, a story about, uh, and, and, and just real quick, you know, another thing that I thought was kind of really interesting is, the way that, you know, Spider-1 made this movie as opposed to his brother, you know, because we know that Rob Zombie, like, yeah, he's had to crowdfund a couple of his movies, 31 and 3 from Hell, I think. 
Uh, but, you know, usually he could get financing and he works with, you know, a big crew and all that kind of stuff. Well, maybe not a big crew, but, you know, I mean, a pretty good sized crew. And, you know, he's got, you know, um, you know, he's got editors. He's got this. He's got that. He's got, you know, everybody. Uh, whereas, like, Spider-One, this movie is very, very much, if you watch the interviews and everything on here, they tell you it's very much kind of a a very independent, very kind of like a homegrown kind of a film. And <clears throat> Spider One, what he did was, you know, in terms of the actors, he, you know, used people that he knew. He, you know, people that, you know, were, were willing to pretty much work and, and not do a lot of, um, and, you know, people who were willing to work, you know, on, you know, low budget conditions, you know, with um, not much money and everything else. <clears throat> And I think he had to hit up like actor friends, people that he knew. Uh, one of the actors in here actually is Scout Taylor Compton, which obviously, you know, it's like uh, he knows from his brother and, you know, because they worked together on the two Halloween movies and things like that. But yeah, Scout Taylor Compton is in this movie and other people that he said, you know, just kind of people that he knew and, and bringing in. And the main, uh, the main actress in this movie, Chrissy Fox, uh, she's, you know, kind of like, it seems like, you know, when you look at the end credits, like pretty much her and Spider-1, they did everything like right down the middle. If he didn't do something, she did it, you know. Like she helped with the music. She helped, you know, she did so much, you know. Uh, I'm trying to remember. I think she edited the movie and stuff. She did a lot of stuff here. Uh, I'm trying to see here. Uh, okay, she's an executive producer. She edited the film. Um, we'll see, what else did she do? She does a lot in here, you know, it's, I know she does a lot on here, but anyway, so we have a series, we have like five stories, okay, and the first story is dealing with acting, and we have this acting coach, and he's, you know, he's supposed to be like the best acting coach in the world, and he's very, you know, he's very temperamental, he's doing an acting class, and, you know, they say like he's, very tough on his students and he only he only selects a handful of students and they have to be kind of like the cream of the crop like the ones that he feels are going to be the best up and comers and everything else <clears throat> and then um we're introduced to this character named Brody who is played by Chrissy Fox and uh so he's you know he calls her on stage and everything and then uh you know I don't want to give too much detail away but let's just say that you know he asks her to, you know, let out the demon. You know, he said, like, you know, he tells her, like, I want you to stand on the stage and I want you to plant your feet and I want you to bring out the monster. I want you to let the demon come out and everything else. And uh, let's just say it, it doesn't go in a very good place. Okay. Then we get on to the second story, which is uh, we're dealing with a painter. And we have this very temperamental, you know, artist named Marcus who's, you know, he's, <clears throat> he's one of these artsy fartsy types. He's like, you know, uh, he gets pissed off because like, you know, he, he gets money from, you know, he gets money to, you know, be a painter and all this kind of stuff. But now he gets pissed off because they demand, it's like, Hey, you know, his dealer and you know, the buyers and stuff are like, Hey, you promised us a painting and we, you know, we gave you the money. We want you to deliver. And he's doing the whole, like, you know, oh my God, I bearing my soul and all this kind of stuff. And how dare you expect me to, to, you know, rush things and all that kind of stuff. It's like, dude, it's like when you're, oh God, it's like, he's just such a charming fellow and everything. And then, uh, you know, let's just say, you know, yeah, let's, uh, you know, let's just say that, you know, he's such a nice guy. And then we come to find out that actually his girlfriend is Brody from the first story. And then, mm, let's just say, yeah, that, uh, uh, you know, the um, the art kind of tends to take over. We'll, just, we'll leave it at that. Then we move into our third story, which is uh, about a guy named Edward who is writing a screenplay. And he's writing a slasher movie and, and you know, he's talking about... Uh, he decides, I'm going to call this character the Whistler. And he's, you know, like, uh, yeah, like, you know, yeah, I think that'd be cool. You know, like how you say whistle while you work. This guy's going to be like whistle while you kill and all this kind of stuff. And so he, you know, he finishes writing his screenplay and he's like, yeah, I'm, I think I did a good deal. I think I did a great job and all this kind of stuff. Well, let's just say that uh, he, the Whistler um, in his 
screenplay takes to pay a visit and uh, decides the proper way to teach Edward how to write a screenplay, and we'll leave it at that. That's what I say. You know, it's pretty interesting. I just don't want to give too much away. You know, uh, then we get into our you know four story. There are five stories all together. Okay, and then uh, you know we get into our four story, which deals with photography, and then um, you know. Uh, we, you know, here's this guy, Adam, he's on a date with, uh, Ivy, I believe that's the character name, which is Scout Taylor Compton's character. And they go out and, you know, they go back to his place and all this kind of stuff. And, and they're sitting there, they're talking and, and, you know, they, they had a night out, they had a date, you know, he gets them a glass of wine and all this. And they start talking about, um, you know, art and everything else. And she talks about, she's into photography and everything else. And, you know, she's trying to, Explain to him, like, you know, about how art can have meaning and how art can elicit, you know, when it's done properly, how art can elicit reaction from you and, and elicit a response and, and emotions and things like this. And, uh, you know, and um, she decides that, uh, you know, uh, she's, you know, she's like, you know, I, I like you. I, I want to, you know, I want to, you know, bring you into my world and, and make you part of my art if you want to do that. And, and she's like, you know, like, did you ever like have any kind of artistic aspirations? And he said, you know, like, I want to be a rock star. And, and she's all like, you know, I can make you a rock star. And, um, yeah, let's not go into how that turns out. So, uh, anyway, and then we finally get to the fifth story, the fifth and final story, which we bring back to our character, Brody. Brody is watching, uh, a pretty cheesy slasher movie with her friend, Hope. And uh, the movie is called Big Baby. And honestly, the, this is fun. And if you watch the interview on here, Spider-Man talked about, like, that was fun. When they shot it, it's fun. And you could tell it's fun by watching it and everything. And, uh, you know, you got this guy who's dressed in, like, a big... He, it almost looks like the Ralphie pink bunny costume, you know, that, you know, Ralphie wears at a Christmas store. And he's got a baby mask on. And he's, like, chasing these girls around with an axe. And he's just... Where? Who's the big baby now? Where? And all this stuff. It's hilarious. It's you know, it's pretty fun to watch. As a matter of fact, like there he is on the back there. Yeah, so that's pretty funny to watch. But anyway, so Brody, she's sitting on the couch. She's watching, you know, with her friend Hope, and uh, she Brody and uh, Brody. She gets the message that she'd been accepted into the acting class. So you kind of realize, like, okay, the the end story is kind of actually the beginning. And it leads into everything else that goes along, right? So she gets into the acting class and all. And, you know, Hope is like, you know, I'm so happy for you. You know, it's like, this is great. You deserve it and all this. And she's like, oh, but what if I'm not good enough? She says, no, no, don't let, you know. And that's the thing, you know, when it comes to art, when, it, when you're an artist and you're a creator of something, anything, you know, it's like you're always going to feel like, uh, you know, oh, my God, what if I'm not good enough? I mean, hell, I'm sitting here just doing a YouTube video. And even I'm sitting here worried about, like, Am I good enough? Am I interesting enough? You know, does anybody even want to watch, sit here and listen to me talk about a movie or something? You know, so it's like, yeah, it's, it makes sense. You know, you, you, you're thinking one minute you can, you go through these, you know, peaks and valleys, you know, like one minute you feel like, I think I did a really, really good, I think I did something really, really good. And then the next minute you kind of like, oh my God, I really suck, you know, and this movie kind of, there is a running theme of that in this film. And then, uh, so Brody, she's like, you know, I want to go, you know, I want to call Marcus and tell him I got into this acting class. And so she calls him and, and he's just as nasty as he can be to her and rude. And he's telling her like, you know, that he's the true artist, that she's a phony and that she just likes to play pretend and that's not art and all this kind of stuff. And so, you know, she, you know, she's like, I want to, you know, she's like, I want to celebrate. She, you know, asks Hope, can I, can we celebrate? And Hope says, well, I got to go, you know play with my band we got to practice and so okay so and then uh so uh hope goes off with her band and they're practicing they're playing music and stuff and they get done they're getting high and um you know hope you know her uh i think it's the uh, guitarist yeah it's a guitarist yeah that's right and he's talking about you know you know he's getting high so he's talking about all this stuff about music and everything else and you know, the notes and all that kind of stuff. And he mentions that there are six notes that if you play these six notes, it can summon demons. And it's like, you know, and you have to play them a certain way and all this kind of stuff. One thing I will say about this segment, it kind of does, 
like especially when you start listening to the notes when it's the notes are being played it definitely does kind of uh bring a tiny little bit of a a little bit of lords of salem to it you know because it kind of makes you think of you know how you know like in lords of salem when they play the record you know the the music kind of it almost has a similar vibe to the music in lords of salem it brings back the you know it brings back the uh witches and everything else and so so uh hope goes home and she's you know you know she sees that brody is in there she's you know upset and everything else and you know marcus is being a jackass he doesn't want to talk to her all this kind of stuff so he goes so she's like i'm gonna to go to bed so she goes to bed and goes to sleep and um hope decides she's gonna go ahead and play the notes you know the guy wrote down the notes for her so she starts playing the notes and she's kind of like yeah this is kind of silly and everything else but at the but while this is going on uh you know brody she ends up becoming possessed and you know and so it kind of like all starts to lead into you know and like i said you realize like the the end of the movie is actually the beginning so it's like um yeah i hope i'm not giving too much away but i think i kind of already did so uh sorry oops spoiler alert if i screwed that up but uh yeah i think it's just, it's kind of hard because this movie is just kind of hard to talk about you know because it's it's not it's not a very linear film but um um, I did enjoy it. Like I said, the first time I watched it, I was a little, some of it went over my head and, you know, but after a second viewing, um, you know, I really warmed up to it and I think you will too. And, uh, <clears throat> and <clears throat> I just think that it is kind of interesting that spider one, who's Rob Zombie's brother, he doesn't just, you know, take the easy route and just try to imitate his brother's style, his brother's films or any of that kind of stuff. You know, he tries to find his own voice. He tries to, you know, create his own style, his own way of telling a story. And, um, you know, instead he went for something that's more, much more of a psychological um, kind of, um, kind of an out there horror film rather than just, you know, kind of a straight in your face bloodbath. And um, I do recommend checking this out, you know, and I would hope that, you know, we can see more movies from, you know, Spider One in the future. And uh, yeah, I mean, you know, it's like, you know, I love Rob, you know, I love Rob Zombie's movies and, you know, I would you know, really enjoy to see more of his brother's movies too. So, uh, so yeah, so Allegoria, I say check it out if you get a chance. But like I said, probably give it a couple of viewings. So, because I think the first time you watch it, you're going to be kind of like, uh, huh? So, like I said, it's a little bit like Tarantino meets David Lynch. But So that's it. So if anybody took the time to watch this, I thank you for doing it and I appreciate you for doing it. I also hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, would you please leave a like? If you haven't already, go and subscribe to the Body Bags channel. We have a different reviewer, one for every day of the week. I am the Saturday reviewer. We have a great bunch of guys. Everybody's doing great stuff. I'm really, really uh, honored, and I'm very lucky to be in this group. And, uh, yeah, so hopefully we're going to have a lot more fun for you guys. So that's it, everybody. Take care. Have a good night, and see you later.